guys, I am a wrestling fan. And I try to be a wrestling fan across a anything wrestling. If you put me in a in a building to watch a wrestling match, I'm probably going to have a good time. I've never been a critical wrestler. I'm more or less critical when it comes to the people in wrestling who just can't seem to want to help but paint themselves in such a ridiculous fashion or they do something so stupid that I, I just I have to talk about it. <laughs> so this here is Mercedes Monet. Monet. I've heard her pronounce it both ways. Uh, Sasha Banks. For those of you who don't know, sorry, I was just wondering what, why my floor was shaking. It's probably because of my child in her bedroom, forgetting that she does not live in a bounce house. So, um, anyway, so I came across this article on Facebook and I wanted to uh, talk about it. So let's get, let's bring this over here. And I'm, oh. that and then we'll go right over here all right so let's read this mercedes monet responds to jonathan coachman i'm sick of old dudes and wrestling coming at me uh this is from the page all elite marks uh the ceo is a, is sick of old dudes and wrestling coming at her lately and she's letting it be known uh let's see yeah AEW's TBS champion and, and New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Women's Champion Monet took exception to her recent negative comment made by about her, her former WWE broadcast team member and ESPN analysis Jonathan Coachman in an episode of a Reffin It Up podcast. During the show, the coach said Monet is terrible on the microphone and never actually backed up the arrogance she had during and following her WWE run. She followed back, or yeah, she fired back and said, I don't read Russell Press, uh, but Russell Press that centers on me pops up in my social media feed. So what a, what an awe <laughs> right away. I don't read it, but it just shows up if it mentions me. She probably has a, a Google alert on or something. Um, I didn't read the article. I just read the quote in the headline. I've been dealing with this stuff for all, over a decade, so I'm used to it. But I'm kind of annoyed with all these dumb old dudes in wrestling coming at me. So are you used to it or are you not used to it? I know the only reason they're doing this is because my name makes people click on their links. My name makes news. Oh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure making news makes Monet. Uh, sure, that's a play on um, making money, which is absolutely true. If anyone who's followed any of the podcasts or interviews with Punk as he has returned to WWE, he's made it very clear that controversy is profitable, and I'm sure she is right in that boat, too. My name makes news, and oh yeah, I'm pretty sure my news makes Monet. Yeah, we did that. Maybe that's why I get paid what I do. Maybe, plus, it's. I'm sure it's hard to see a young woman know and receive her value, and not to mention make a lot more than they do. So, making her opinion known. On, but hey, either way, we can keep talking about me, whether negatively or positively. It reminds me that I must be doing something right. Additionally, Monet's advocate uh, released a statement. Um, and then an, an advocate for Monet it says, it always bums me on people. I'm a big fan of Disappoint Me. Uh, and then he proceeds to say how much he loved the coach back when he was, you know, back in WWE doing his thing. And he's always been kind to my wife, but what he said about Mercedes seemed extreme and came off as personal. I can't argue with it. Uh, with what happens in the ring, it's subjective. And I'm just a fan. I can speak to the business of TV. So he, he kind of goes on in a very long winded. Um, a very long-winded response and the reason why I wanted to talk about it was because it seems to me that when it comes to um let me just adjust here here we go when it comes to Mercedes Monet I'm noticing a lot of people are very divided on her and I don't think anyone's taking away from the fact that she is incredibly talented in the ring. No one is taking that away from her. I mean, obviously, she must be decent in the ring if they're allowing her to win championships all over. That's not the problem. But I think we are starting to notice a little bit of a trend. I mean, we all knew before she signed with AEW that there was speculation that she might be going back to WWE. However, rumors are floating around that apparently she floated an offer to WWE that they very uh, quickly rejected because it would have made her the they would have made her the top grossing 
women's talent on the roster outside of Charlotte Flair. And WWE was not going to let that happen. Um, for those of you who don't know how this whole controversy started, uh, years ago, I'm trying to remember the exact dates, I want to say about... I want to say about two, two plus years ago, two to three years ago, uh, Sasha Banks and Naomi, we were holding the Women's Tag Team Championships. Um, they were currently over as like the best women's tag team on the roster that far. Everyone loved them. They went to Monday Night Raw and then proceeded to walk out of the venue and since then, no details have been given. Um, it doesn't help that um, whenever angry fans have kind of confronted uh, Monet slash Banks at like autograph signings or little interview or like little press briefings, it doesn't help that she doesn't give really any answers. And she, it's usually like a very snide, backhanded comment. And, and to her credit, I understand where she's coming from. You, people shouldn't be running their mouth about you, about things they know nothing about. I get that. But, it, you know, there, there's better ways to handle it. So why am I talking about it? Well, it's because I think it's really easy to, in this case, point a finger at Coachman being like, Oh, why are you going after Monet? You're just jealous. You're a bitter old man. Jealousy. Oh, you you just... Maybe you're secretly in love with her. I'm sure that was uh, a comment that was made. But the funny thing is, is like... Um, I don't have the exact podcast... Uh, I don't have the exact podcast sitting in front of me. Hold on, let me see if I can find it real quick. All right, so I think I found it. It's on Spotify. It's not on YouTube. But we're I think we're about to get into it here. And this is what he said on the show. TNA is never going to come into our conversation. You know, we and, and there's it is so hard to build a brand. You guys are doing it here with your show. I'm doing it with two different brands. We're dealing with big-time companies now. And there has to come a cutoff for me where I just say I can't watch anymore. I do think it's very important, though. That they that and I don't think Vince would have ever done this. So I'm glad that, that Triple H is doing it. You never know who's going to take off and guys need to be in front of a TV audience before they get to Raw and Smackdown and screw up and then never get a shot again. So partnering or having a, a theater system and it used to be OVW. Now it could be TNA. You could find a diamond in the rough. You could start a storyline early like we've seen lately. Say, oh, this guy was here then and now he's here now. And and you actually have video of that. So I think it's it's super important to have a feeder system. So I think TNA is going to be an important thing. Although for me, that's where I cut where I cut the line. I just only have so many time, you know, hours in a day. He was I believe he was asked questions about like watching content outside of WWE and he said he, he just dedicates a lot of his time to WWE and he was asked about TNA and he was just talking about how he sees potential and what TNA could uh, bring but he's like he's also talking about having like a ton of experience in front of large groups of people large crowds it's it's an entirely different other thing I get that and so coach do you watch AEW to an extent I do uh, uh, some some when I know that the people that I like are going to be on, like to me, MJF, I was shocked. Uh, and from what I understand, I heard the number that he's making now, the new deal. And none of us ever know, but he's the one dude that me, to me moves the needle a little bit. But when you have a guy like him, who's as close to the rock as they have, but you have nobody else that can match him on the mic. Do you guys feel this way that if you don't have a guy that can match you, sometimes you can come off as a bully or just using lines to get a pop from the crowd. And, his stuff is so good, in my opinion, that I feel it He's outshines everything else. And I just think they struggle. I think that Tony Khan, having a guy who was a fan, and if I see one more picture of him when he was eight years old, standing next to Hulk Hogan, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going to lose my mind. I, and I, I can't even fathom the inmates running the asylum. I saw Mercedes do an interview, and by the way, I don't want to really insult her too much, but the AEW people already hate me anyway. And she said that they gave her creative control. 
She said, when I'm on the movie set, if I want the private jet, Tony lets me use it whenever I want. Well, no wonder she didn't last in the WWE. Why oh. would she ever get a private jet to use, which I don't believe to be true? But if he is that stupid, then that's on Tony Khan. I mean, that could just be her playing into her character. But if that really is how she is in real life, yeah, I can imagine why people in WWE were getting tired of her. If they were getting tired of her. I, I can imagine she's not going to go... It's not going to go over well with everyone else. They're going to they're gonna be very resentful and um, fed up with that kind of uh, attitude quick. But to say she's the biggest signing they've ever had and she's the best diva or whatever, she, she's terrible on the microphone. It takes two Thank seconds you. to listen to her cut a promo. And the other day, Britt Baker just ran circles around her in their mm -hmm. promo segment when Britt came back, looked amazing, by the way. That's what a star looks like. You've got to yep. be able to back it up with the arrogance. And Mercedes has never been able to do that in the WWE. I don't know why Tony Khan, but hey, she made all the money, but now she's getting exposed because they're giving her her own mic segments every week. And it's not good. And that's why the crowd nope. the other day told her to shut up. The crowd knows you got to be able to talk and work. And she can't talk. And Coach, what, that's Coach, why sometimes she comes on, I turn it off. Coach, what is she the CEO of? What is that about? Well, all right. So his dad, his dad is, you know, they, they imagine, imagine a cash register never stopping. So they have the patent on, uh, car bumpers. So basically almost every. So I, I'm, I'm going to stop it there. I, I, I don't, I don't believe it goes a whole lot further. I'll jump ahead a little bit and see if he touches on, uh, Monet again. Bumper that's on a car and fantastic. Can you ever imagine a scenario where you think that would work, but that's no. what they did. And now they try to figure out why nobody watches. They can't sell tickets. They don't do house shows. But at least those four dudes got their money. That's why mm -hmm. I got so much respect for Cody. He's so yeah. So basically, that was that was the comment he was referring to. And I'll even go one step further because he was he was asked the same thing here. Um, and this was five days ago. And uh, the podcast I believe was July tenth. So about a month ago, he said this. This what this uh, by Sportskedia came out five days ago. Can't even imagine a scenario. Even though Vince was very hands on and all, I can't imagine a scenario where a superstar would walk into the building and say, "I'm the biggest free agent signing of all time." Because that's what Tony said. I would never imagine saying, "I control my creative." Because if you control your own creative, then that's a problem. Yeah. Because the promos are horrible. And when you say the same thing over and over and over again, eventually the crowd's going to do what they just did recently, which was what? Shut the F up. And to me, you've got to have, and that's, that's why The Rock was so great back in the day. Oh, he had an incredible writer. He stuck with that writer, Brian Gerwitz. And I was with yeah. him for two or three years at the beginning of my career, which was enormously valuable for me because when you have a real lot of help there, I know they, they, they signed a big writer. I can't remember her name. She got some credit yesterday, and I've met her a few times when yeah. she was in WWE. But they, they need to work on her character and stop complaining about what you didn't get in the WWE. And really, when you're at home, break it down and make it simple. Well, it, I, to it, this day, I still practice in the mirror. Check out Brain Bar. So, what do we have <clears throat> to draw from that? He's just, he's just, he's got opinions on her promo work. He's not criticizing her as a talent, just... Her promo work leads a lot to be desired. Now, let's not speculate. Uh, let's get into it ourselves. What what do you think? And let's get into this. This was shortly after she had signed with AEW, and I believe this was when she was going into her uh, match with Julia Hart for the TBS title. So, remember, we're talking promo ability here. W what do you think? Last week, somebody attacked me in the dark because they were too afraid to face me in the light. But as the CEO, I always get right back up. And as the CEO, I can't wait to pay back that bitch who attacked me last week. Lights off, huh? Lights off. That sounds a little too familiar, Julia Hart. You know, Julia, I didn't picture you to be such a coward. Or maybe it's someone who wants me to think it was you. 
Maybe it's someone who doesn't want to face me at double or nothing when I'm all healthy. <laughs> Either way, I am putting the entire women's division on notice. And Willow and Julia, I look forward to watching your little mixed tag team match tonight. Because remember, ladies, there's a price to pay when you mess with Mercedes Monet. Okay, so I'm sorry that was before the match of Dynasty with Willow and Julia. Willow would win, and that would set up the match with uh, Monet and Willow. Um, that was a pretty big line over in, or a pretty big storyline in Japan. So I can tell you right now, based on her delivery, um, I'm, I'm, it's average. It, it's average. Like you, you can just tell people who have charisma. Here, it's, it's really a whole lot of just pointing out the obvious. And <clears throat> all Koshin was saying that he just wasn't a fan of her promo work. And the funny thing is, is like I kind of noticing a trend with her promo work in this company. So here is the episode of, I believe it's Dynamite, where she is giving herself a victory toast for becoming uh, a double champion after winning the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Women's title. And this is the promo that leads into the confrontation between herself and Dr. Britt Baker. Please say hello to your CEO. Notice how the energy in the crowd has gone down. And I'm like, this is supposed to be AEW, the land where like people cheer just as much for the bad guys as they do for the baby or like the, the baby faces is just as much as they cheer, cheer for the heels. And, like, you can just tell that in just a few months, the energy has already kind of left the room. Now, at this point, I do want to point out, she is a, a heel now, a, a, a bad guy. So, she's playing into a heel character. Just, but, like, the, the, like she should be made for, like, the CEO character, you know, you know, there's always a price to pay CEO. And I'm like, I'm like okay, that's a perfect character to play as a, a good strong heel and it's just I, I feel like it's just it's the same delivery I am so honored to be here with you tonight to celebrate my history making double championship victory yeah no energy to that at all and huge shout out to my boys my EVPs Nicholas and Matthew Jackson for the extra security tonight. Because one thing for sure, I will not be interrupted. Uh -huh. So before we celebrate, I want to set the record straight about the past, the present, and the future. Because these two titles, and everybody here knows that I am the past, the present, and the future. Because I'm the best there was, the best there is, and the best that there ever will be. That place is. They're in Canada, so she's obviously playing to, you know, the, the Bret Hart fans. Smart move, but yeah, I, I see what she did there. That was, that was. Unique. Never heard that That's before. sacrilegious. Yeah, yeah, especially, yeah. And as far as Britt Baker goes, well, Britt, you better wake up from your stupid little fantasy about facing me at All In, because that's not going to happen. Because if you did face me in the ring, I would leave you with way more than a couple herniated discs and a stroke. I would leave you for dead, bitch. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I just there's just not a lot there. So she's a heel champion, but she's a double champion, and she's refusing to wrestle someone. But if she does, she's gonna really mess him up. And of course, let's let's drop, let's drop a bitch on her because you know, th see that's what I notice with a lot of these promos with people who really don't understand how to emote and how to. Um, be able to deliver lines in a very poignant matter, but they have to resort to like 
using cuss words and certain buzzwords and cheap heat in order to get over. And at this point, I'd kind of be worrying a little bit if I'm Tony Khan. I'm like, I put a lot of money into this signing, and I just, I, me personally, at this point, I'm wondering what is the CEO gimmick. I just don't understand what I don't understand. I just don't understand it. Maybe it's a New Japan thing that I just don't get. But I, I to me personally, it's not coming off right away for for like the casual viewer. So Calgary and everybody at home, it's time to celebrate. So grab your glass. Let's pour a little toast. Bet you can't guess what happens next. And let's raise it up to the greatest of all time, the history maker, the star maker. Too bad. Here comes the doctor. Yeah. So <laughs> it's 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 just funny. <laughs> like everyone knew that this was coming. So to kind of just wrap it all up, was Jonathan Coachman making? an unfair dig at uh, Monet? I, I don't think so. I think it was, he was being asked about the business. He was being asked questions on that podcast that were leading up to, you know, needing, people needing help, people needing writers, and basically how having too much creative control when you should be taking advantage of all of those things can essentially lead you down the wrong way. Um... And he just went on to say that with someone like Monet, with a ton of money attached to um, their signing, he's he's critical of her promo work. And he's not the only one. Other people have come out and have been critical to varying degrees about it. But honestly, I really don't see, I really don't see, like, all of the outrage. And, and to be fair, I, I kind of put the blame here on Monet. Because this is August 3rd, this this was reported on, so this is like almost two weeks, yeah, about two weeks after the podcast, and she's basically saying like, oh, she's just sick and tired of old dudes coming at her because they're jealous and all that other thing, and I'm like, no, no, not at all, like, hold on, we'll, we'll, let's go down here again, um, so she, she, now, we, we read, we watched, we listened, it's very clear that Coachman was not acting out of a place of malice. He was merely just pointing something out in, in questions that were being asked to him and how he felt on it. And he said that he wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but he was just trying to make a point as to, like, people in the ring and utilizing everything, you know, that they had at their expense and everything that was afforded to them. And then he, I'm assuming like the, just the name might have just come up at spur of the moment. So I don't think it was necessarily a direct attack. It was more like an open criticism in which he was very much being mild, if anything negative. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so again, after hearing both what he said after the fact and what he said during the podcast let's go back and see what she said i don't read wrestle press uh but wrestle press that centers on me pops up on my social feed i didn't read the article i read the quote in the headline i've been dealing with this kind of stuff for over a decade so i am used to it so she knew she, she didn't know the context going into it um, but I am kind of annoyed with these dumb old dudes in wrestling coming at me. I know the only reason they're doing so is because my name makes, uh, people click on their links. That's really funny considering the fact that this was a Spotify podcast and it was not directly advertised on that podcast that her name was going to come up at all. So like this to me just feels like just sour grapes. My name makes news, and yeah, it makes money, but that's what I get paid. Plus, I'm sure it's hard to see a young woman know and receive her value, and not to mention make a lot more than they do. So, basically, this is this is what it all comes down to me. This is the opinion of someone who is extremely coddled and extremely entitled in the business. In my opinion, based on what I've heard, she keeps talking about wanting to get her story out there about what happened in WWE that has yet to happen. She has snapped at people in interviews 
people who have done autographs and pictures with her. There's a lot of reports about how she's a little difficult to deal with. And if she's the kind of person who acts that way about, you know, she gets her, you know, she gets her way um, behind the scenes, then this to me just sounds like an overly protected person in the business who is now upset because someone is critical of their in-ring promo work, which we can both agree not great, it's not terrible, but they really should stop giving segments to someone who can't emote and, you know, and, uh, and you know, and they can't showcase a good range of emotion during their promo. Everything's very flat, everything is boring, and it's just, you're only just kind of waiting to see what it's going into next and not rather so much in MJF's case where it's like everything he says you want to listen to because there's a point to what he says. Yes, he does swear, but that fits with the character. So I will just say this. I think Monet here is acting extremely childish and immature. And I think this is proves really why I think WWE initially said no, because they looked at the dollar sign attached to it. They were probably thinking to themselves, well, she's a bit of a head case when she was here. Yes, she can wrestle. Yes, she can sell merchandise. But at that price point, and with how much creative control that she wants with her character, the WWE was like, this is an investment that we're probably going to lose out on. And what's to say she doesn't maybe walk out again? Again, speculating. But it's very clear in this case very clear in this alone where she just lumps in all all these older people who have opinions of her they're just coming at me because the only reason why is because there is because her name makes uh makes them money and her money and at the very end she says because it's uh Plus, I'm sure it's hard to see a young woman know and receive her value and not to mention make a lot more than they do. So it all comes down to, oh, they're just bitter because I make more money than they do. But in that situation, it was like over, well over, I want to say an hour and a half into the podcast before he even mentioned her name. And that conversation piece lasted maybe a couple of minutes at, at best. And then he transitioned, I believe, over to talking about the members of the elite. So it's not like he dedicated an entire section of a podcast spewing hate on her he literally was just making comment talking about how having having that kind of creative control and not knowing how to utilize the powers and the and um the assets that you have to do better he then goes on to talk of, and he also said in that same podcast about how the you know the company itself is mainly ran by someone who is a huge wrestling fan but someone who doesn't know how to run a business you have all this money utilize it stop booking everyone in in like fantasy booking setting and then be wondering why you're keep going down in the ratings so to me his comments were fairly harmless and her response is pretty much par for the course as to why i think the rumors of her being an entitled little brat um who is just who's used to getting her a spoiled rotten little brat who's used to getting her own way and i'm and this comment right here pretty much proves that she doesn't want to hear it any other way but her own I, I have reason to think that this is just her feelings being hurt and rather than just taking the ball and running with it and being like okay well i can do better or completely just dismissing it and saying i didn't really hear it in full context so i don't know what it was she decided to just go into business for herself because at the end of the day this controversy just gives her more money and she has no interest on bettering the whole situation but if it means her making money, that's all that matters, I guess.